Well, good morning everybody. My name is Dr. J.D. Swanson, for those who don't know me. And today's 15 minutes of thought is going to be about the Soto Uke techniques that we talk about in, um, through testing. So that includes the Sotuke Gyakuzuki, Sotuke Empyuchi, Sotuke Empyarakan Gyaku, those kinds of ideas. And I want to sort of give you some hints on how to think about practicing those as you work your way forward. So without further ado, let's get going. Us. <clears throat> okay, so Sotuke, right, basic technique, you all know the concept and the idea is to come across your body. Remember the most important thing with, with sutuke in general that, that's, that you look for is this idea of as you load, whether it's open or closed, doesn't matter, depends on application. I open, that's how I was taught. The second thing is whether or not this arm is up or pulled in by the ear, doesn't matter based on application, right? My instructor, big guy, had it out here. I, medium sized guy, keep it out here because that's the way I was taught. There's also pulling it right in by the ear that is also equally as good and also probably superior to my technique. I don't mind. The thing that is important though is that this humerus, this piece here, is held absolutely parallel to the ground, not slotting it down here and coming across. That's more advanced. That's later once you understand. Remember, basics are about teaching your body how to move. So being able to make this contraction through the rib cage and through the body, down and making that, you must understand that feeling before you can just pop from the side to understand that feeling. Popping from the side, it'll end up sort of anywhere, right? So holding here and driving down is important in your development of your karate. When you're older, grumpier, yeah, sure, you can bring it low. The second thing that's important with this loading hand, whether you're here or here, this, the radius and ulna, must be twisted as far outward as you can. Don't be slack. Turn them right out and feel as it touches that rotation. Whomp, this feeling, or even here, whomp, as it comes around, whomp, that twist. So you want to be able to have gas in the tank for the twist of this arm at the end of the technique. So as you practice, when you're looking at beginners doing just the block by itself, things that you're looking for are those shapes, this parallelness, this rotation out, other hand out, right? You're looking for the elbow and hip to move together. So sort of looking at it from a basic standpoint, you're looking for here, one, then two, that full turn. Here, one, up, two, turn, that kind of motion. The final position for this block, I always go, if you do the Vulcan, live long and prosper, turn it around, it grabs hold of your nose. So that, that's how I often think about this. Again, rear hand back, you know all these pieces. So as you sort of progress, you're initially looking for those shapes. The second thing that you start to look for is that timing. So if they're in the block, you're looking for here to here, same time, same time. Not this sort of, kind of thing. You're looking for the whole technique, one, one, two, as it moves. And then as they move, they smooth it out. As they progress rather, they simply smooth out the technique. So those are the basic pieces that you're looking for in Sotuke. So what I'd like you to do is practice Sotuke. Forward, backwards, upside down, many times, just to get those feelings of the motion. Again, more advanced people, you can go from Jiu Kamei and just practice, oh, to make that short course kind of technique, which is what we see at the end. Give it a go. Excellent. So that's the first step. Second step is now Gyakuzuki, or adding the Gyakuzuki. So this is very similar to what we've talked about in other classes. The idea here is they make the block, then feel that rotation, the drive off the hip, the slamming of the door to close. So it's one, pull back, two, punch. One, two. And what you're looking for here is as they progress in that, number one, beginners may be rotating through the central axis, more advanced through the axis here. You're looking for that nice connection between the block and the expansion, whoop, here, and then the contraction of the punch, that sort of rubber band, doing, doing as they go through. 
So what I would like you to practice here now is block punch, block punch, right, in as many spaces as you have. You may be down, I'm going to make yakusuki, right, making that nice clean load. One, two, three. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. This kind of feeling. Something else that's important, just because I caught myself almost doing it, is feeling of this knee. Make sure as they make that block, especially when they add the gyakuzuki, quite often their attention will go to that punch, or your attention will go to that punch. You'll see this rotation here. Make sure that you push this like you're pushing along a chair, right? Or along a beam. So as I make the block, I'm here, I'm not collapsing it in. Okay, so practice going up and down, block punch, block punch, as you move. One other quick point, again, timing is key. Right, making sure that that develops into that smooth, sharp, fast technique. So, give that a go. Excellent. The next one is, of course, now that you make the sotuke, making that shift into empyuchi. So what you often see with people is they make the block fine, and then what they do is they then remember the empyuchi loads and pushes. You must use both arms. Okay, so here, sweep, sweep, sweep. Loading on top, underneath, your choice, right? So here, hum, over, hum, right, or underneath. Your choice, your organization. ISKF says load underneath. Kanazawa sensei always taught me load above. I do both, depends on my flavor of the week and what I'm doing actively with my opponent. The point is though, is that what a lot of people will do is they will be here and they shift their body weight back and slide forward. When you think about this, and it, this can be important for a very beginner, beginner level, to understand and, and know that you have the time to feel this warm, warm, that kind of feeling of this arm. But in reality, it makes no sense. Why? Because I've just blocked somebody, block. If I pull away, what's gonna happen in that gap of time in between? I'm gonna get hit. So it's better training for your body to simply feel the yoriashi or the mayashi type of technique. So what happens? is as you push, as you push, keep this strong, keep this knee strong. And if I lift it and switch to keep it arch, look what happens. So if I'm here and I simply lift my front leg, I switch to keep it arch. How about that? So I'm here, I simply open within the position of the block, my hips continue to open, I feel a pull in my groin. If I let that groin go, if I let it release, I automatically switch to kibadachi naturally. The trick is, is to add the entire quickly. You've got to just simply freaking speed your arms up. Don't be, not this. Rather, simply just make the block. So as you go, open, feel the pull, and drive. Here, open, and you can see, here. Let it go. And what this does is this now makes sense. The block would occur on the wrist, wrist to wrist, their body would be about here. I'm not gonna reach it with them if I pull in and pull forward unless I completely slide. If I simply now slide straight in, I'm exactly where I need to be. So allow that to happen. So have this feeling of connect. So initially, what I want you to do is have this feeling of make the block. Now, just through the hips, turn, 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 release. Try that first. Turn, 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 release. Then, turn, 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 release. That feeling. Turn, 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 release. Notice both hands are still in the action. They just move quick. So, the technique, initially, one, two. Once you're better, feel the connection, boom. As we talked about pushing outwards on the, the outside edges of the feet, right, that feeling here. And then, 
just let it go. Click, bang. So you're ending up here. Technique then starts to flow together. I simply pull, release, pull, release, pull, release, and then. Does that make sense? So, what I want you to try, try 20, 30 reps. Uh, yeah. Then 20, 30 reps of here, just step in. Of just shifting in. Your rear leg will shift in. It does that naturally, it has to because it's making the stance. With that, give it a go. Excellent. So once you've got that, now we can move on to the Arak and Gyakuzuki, back into Zen Kutz. So once you're here, so the, the normal thing is that once you, well, let me start. What you often see people is they do it as this weird, sort of broken down, eh, 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 eh. So I'll do sort of an impression of it. You'll often see it as one, two, three, four. And you'll see it sort of as a sort of stilted, stuttery, disjointed kind of motion. Instead, use the flowing action of the hip to throw the technique in as you want it. So what you'll end up here is this feeling of feeling. So now it has timing and rhythm. So how do you do that? You do it exactly the same way as we did before. You do the initial sort of block strike as in Soto Empi. So we hear this feeling. Now, as you make the Arakan, what I want to do is I want to rotate my hip with the technique, just slightly. So you don't want to have the idea of dropping this knee in, rather simply as your hip rotates just slightly, like mine's moving forward maybe yeah, this much, as I drop, my knee pushes further forward and into the ground. As I push that forward, right, that happens with the technique. So it's here, so I'm here, I've just made my MP, now I throw one. Now, because as soon as I feel that pressure through my leg here and that push on the knee, right, as it pushes to the, the range of motion pushing forward over my toe, what I'll do is I now simply, rather than bring it back, use the retraction to push out with the Gyakuzuki and drive forward. So it's almost like I'm driving, drive, 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 drive. This feeling with the hip. So it's that one, two. If you want, you can also from here, if you're still learning and, and sort of building on this, you can also make a um, one, then drive. But I find easier, one, just throw the two techniques together. They flow together well with that hip continuing through its action. Connect, connect. So here, empty, connect, connect. So what you end up with is the hip effectively, boom, 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 boom. Large, small, small, large. And that's what this drill is about. It's not what your arms are doing. It's what your legs and your hips are flowing to doing while your arms are flailing literally about. Sorry, through exceptionally coordinated karate, it allows them to coordinate together. So the feeling that you want here is this nice sort of open, expand that hummy, keep it arch. Now from here, expand the hummy, and then zen kutz. So it ends up being this nice sort of feeling. Then you simply throw your hands into it to make that movement. So now it's no longer the stilted eh, 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 eh kind of feeling. Boom, boom. So one more time, normal speed is here. That feeling. And with that, what I would like you to do is practice it. Give that a go, both sides up and back. And then from there, I'll give you one last sort of thought about Sotuke, and then we'll finish there. Excellent, so the last thought about Sotuke, of course, 
is when you're in kamae, don't forget that blocks are degenerate. That doesn't mean they run around like little hooligans, but rather they have the ability to be served several purposes. Sotuke is this action, and again, you've seen other videos where we've talked about this idea of just, just the rotation of the wrist and the connection of the body. But remember all of the other parts of the block. So when you step, even if I'm stepping forward out of Shizentai, I still make my full and complete movement in Kihon. Why? Because guess what? This is doing something, this is doing something, this is doing something. So always make sure that you pay attention to that. When you go to Jiu, what you may find is that simply this is doing something, this is doing something, this is doing something, this is doing something, this is doing something. That's all just Sotuke. And so with that, let's stop there. I hope you have a wonderful day and we'll talk again soon. See you later. Hey, us. Thank you.